Hey, it's MK, and I am back with another May I Scrap Lift You, and today I am lifting Essie Jane. I absolutely loved this layout of hers, and I will tell you why in just a few minutes. So, I went straight to my Cricut and cr um, <laughs> cut out a bunch of skeleton leaves as well as their backer sheets, and then I plan on using my spare um, cardstock for my photo mats, or the photo cluster, I should say. Then I went and I cut out... A, um, the backer leaves, I welded them all together and cut them out so that way I could have a pocket page within, or a, um, a shaker pocket within my layout. And then this is going to be the backer for my entire layout around the, the page. So I went ahead and I had my Cricut cut the paper, um, this specialty paper down by size. Now that brown paper um, I'll, I'll tell you that in just a few minutes as well. I have some uh, leaves and a stamp set that were from a paper pumpkin kit, I believe last September or October. I can't remember. Um, I'm very slowly dwindling down my stampin' or my paper pumpkin kits. I plan on stamping those in the evergreen um, by close to my heart. I have this wood grain stencil that I'm going to use this Vicki Booten Creative, Creative FX. Um, through using a palette knife, just a little, I'm going to try the plastic one, you guys. I usually always go for my silicone one, but I'm going to try the plastic. And then I have a ton of random uh, bits and bobs, some by 49 and Market, some by Simple Stories, um, some that were stamped, a patch that still has not made it on a layout yet. And truth be told, it's not going to make it on this one either. I'm struggling using those. And then last but not least, I have a paper clip um, also by 49 and Market. Oh no, it's not last. Huh? I forgot about to show you the, the shakers. Now, even though the shaker pack says it's into the woods, those um, little pieces are just off cuts from gosh knows where. I, I don't know where they are. Um, but this um, papaya punch, that was definitely a Spiegel Mom scrap um, sequence. But the wood wood veneer pieces that I plan on intermixing are not and I just stuck them in a packaging by Subico Mom Scraps to keep them all contained. Okay back to the brown paper that I have here. I actually created this faux wood grain paper a couple weeks ago because I was trying out this crackle paste or crackle paint medium of some sort that was gifted to me by um, a local friend here. She, um, she uses it on her backgrounds for her home decor pieces. And she thought it would be kind of cool if I put it on my, on my projects, you know, my paper projects. And I thought, well, okay, I'll give it a try. So I pulled out a, um, you know, a cardstock that I don't usually you grab for, um, you know, initially. And so I went ahead and I followed the directions. It says very put a very light coat of um, this crackle paste, wait for it to dry, and then um, add a very thin coat of your paint. And so I did that. Well, for this being paper, I put a very thin coat on because I didn't want it to soak in. And then I put a very thin coat of my brown um, acrylic paint, and it did nothing. Like, it just... I don't know, but I liked the way that I put it on so thin that it looked like a faux wood grain piece. So I kept it in my stash thinking I could use it for wood grain. Well, when I ran into Jessie's layout that has this beautiful wood grain and then she added the wood grain stencil on top of it, I was like, oh my gosh, that is perfect. I have the perfect paper for that. So that is what I used. Okay, doing a little bit of prep work here, I went ahead and I stamped all my veins for my Stamp It Up leaves. Then I inked all the edges of those leaves. Now I'm inking all the edges of my Cricut leaves, but I'm also going to glue the veins together and then watch how fast that glue dries to where I can go ahead and ink up all of the white spots that are left over from when the blade turns. Um, the, the one thing about Close to My Heart's paper is it is white core cardstock. And so if I'm being very picky about it, I do ink up all those white spots. However, most of the time it doesn't even bother me. And so I just, I just move on. But I have found that um, all the other cardstock that I have tried to use in my Cricut close to my heart is the best. It's, it's a little on the spendy side. Um, I can't remember how much it is now for 24 sheets, uh, to be honest, but I have to say that, um, I don't have issues with my Cricut. Okay. Moving on to the photo mat. 
um, or photo cluster. I'm trying to build it like Jessie's. She, she has three photos and all on one photo mat and photo cluster. She's got a little scrap of green that um, is behind the main focal photo. And so I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to get that scrap. Well, I decided I'm going to gut out a portion of my background paper. I thought, oh, that is perfect. I don't have to go find a new scrap. It will match the layout because it came from the bottom layer, right? Not a big deal. I apologize about the phone being in the way. Um, I had no idea <laughs> that it was even there. Um, I'm still prepping for 31 days of cut files, which I will be bragging about here shortly. I've got quite a few things coming up, um, not just for my channel, but in, in Facebook group, uh, in Facebook as well. So stay tuned for all of that that is coming up. But I did not realize that my cell phone was in the way once I, um, once I hit the go button on the, the machine. Um, I use my cell phone and then I have a second machine and I use um, my, my computer to run that one. And then um, I use a, an iPad to use um, to run another machine. So I've got machines going all the time. Okay, so I went and I put my page protector down first this time before I went to my sewing machine. And I attempted to sew around all of these, um, all of this leaf background, right? I wanted to sew in my um, page protector. However, the corners and things I'm not very good at. So when I went and double stitched, it definitely looks a lot better than if I just left it a single stitch. Then I'm going to try to place my leaf veins back down. Now, one of the things that I thought looked really cool by themselves was the leaf leaf veins glued to my faux wood grain. Um, but when I put my faux wood grain back on top of those veins, they kind of get lost. And um, I thought that I should have taken them off and put them just on the peachy pink background. But I'm going to keep going and see if I like it. Um, uh, truth be told, I still don't like it, even though I'm I, I love the way that the layout turns out. I'm just kind of ignoring that big old shaker pocket because <laughs> it's just too dark, uh, to be honest. Um, I, I just, I really should have left it with this peach and then the, the, um, the green veins behind it. I, I really should have. Um, but I, I was worried that it was going to be a, an eyesore. Now here's where I feel like this is what darkened my layout right here is I added another layer of page protector to keep and contain my sequence because when I thought about it, I was kind of second guessing myself that if I just laid that backer piece straight down, you know, um, and lined it up on top of my shaker with the veins, would I have gotten it straight or would it have been crooked? Because here I am using all this wood, glue, you know, all wood glue, all this glue, all of these, um, I mean, I've got lots and lots of stuff going on here and I did, I was worried that I wasn't going to get it straight unless I laid it down like this. So if I would have done this opposite and laid the backer piece down, would I have gotten that correct? Um, so I was a little bit worried, a little bit scared. Um, that's why I added the second sheet of page protector and I feel like that's what darkened my entire shaker box. Now it doesn't look too bad. It just, you lose what that shape is now that all those sequins are in there. Um, I don't see it as a leaf cluster as much. So it's not bad, but it's not my favorite either. So just being honest. Okay. Now I'm going to get to decorating and I am uh, using Jessie's layout as a guide of where she has her stars. I definitely wanted to, um, I feel like I, I use a lot of stars in all my layouts. Um, that is the one thing that I don't ever have to worry about having too much of in my, in my stash. Um, because I do, I could add a star to anything. I love adding stars. So I wanted to do something different and that's why I went with all these leaves. And the best part about, um, and I, and I know I keep, keep talking about crickets. The best part about, um, the cricket images nowadays, as opposed to when it first came out is that all the images are separate images now. So when you see, um, like this here, this was actually a branch leaf cluster. Yes, that is the technical term of this particular image that I found just by doing a search of leaves and then going through all the, I don't know, 7,000 images. And I get to the one that I like the most, which was, I don't know, probably 
a hundred or so down, um, I, I ran into this image and you can't tell that it is all separate images until you bring it on to your, your, your mat is what it's called. And when I bring it onto the mat, the first thing I do is I open up my layers, um, my layers tab and I see all the layers that are involved. And sometimes when the older images pop up, the bottom layer is where everything gets glued to. So you've got your branch and then it is attached to all of your leaves, so on and so forth. And for this one, um, it actually had every single leaf individual and then the branch was individual, which I was like, perfect. That, that is exactly what I'm looking for because I didn't want to cut multiples of this branch and I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time altering it so I could cut it. But I did have to weld it all together um, on a separate plane, you know, so I copied and pasted. So I had two images. That way I got my shaker box. So that's not a big deal. But when the, um, the skeleton veins of it got glued together, I did have to kind of manipulate those a little bit. And then off camera, I cut out what I didn't want that I couldn't take off from the Cricut. Okay, now that that is done, these are just photos. Uh, we went, um, like I call it my backyard. Um, we just took the truck out one time and this is back in 2020, you know, when, when fuel was cheap. <laughs> um, we took uh, the truck out for a drive. We got, we got a little cabin fever and thought, you know what, let's just go. We don't care where we're going. And we took it off road and um, found, actually found this really cool natural spring um, over, I believe we are just outside of the Palisades. We found a dirt road and decided to start taking it. And then, um, the road ended and we just kept going and found, found a natural spring. And so we were parked there and I'm walking away from the spring and the truck just looks like it is sitting on top of the world with the mountains in the back of it and all that stuff. And, um, my daughter just walked up to my husband. And so it was, it was just a cute moment. Um, <laughs> I know I take way too many pictures of my trucks. I take, uh, or of our vehicles, I should say. I take just as many pictures of our vehicles as I do um, of my children because it's kind of fun looking back and seeing what we used to drive to what we drive now to what we'll drive later, if that makes sense. I love looking at all the vehicles that have come and gone in our lives. So anyways, just thought it would be a fun, cute layout. So, and I did love the addition of the peachy pink and the, and the um, uh, yeah, the corally color added to this layout. So I'm going to finish off this layout with a, um, a shimmer spray from Dilutions. It's called Desert Sand. And when I sprayed it on, it definitely didn't show up right away. And so I thought, okay, I'm just going to go to my tried and true and sprinkle on my Altenew um, Pure White spray ink is what it is called. Now I've said this before, you guys have to wait for it to dry before you can, and I mean overnight 24 hour type of deal before you can stick it in a page protector because it does, it is an ink. Um, it is, it's almost like a paint. So it turns chalky and if it's not dried all the way, it does rub off on your page protector. Ask me how I know. Um, so I just, I got into the habit of setting it off to the side waiting a few days before um, shoving my, my pages into a layout. It's a hard habit to get into. I have to say that because of the fact that um, I'm, I'm used to, okay, I've done with this layout. I put it in the album and then, you know, I, I know exactly where it goes. But um, I, I do like the fact that I'm no longer getting chalky <laughs> page protectors, which it just wipes right off, you guys. It's not a big deal at all. I just thought that it would be a good warning before somebody goes, she says she loves this. Why does she love this? And that is why. Okay. Thank you so very much for hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate it. I had a blast making this layout. It was very unique, very entertaining to do. Um, I, I would have never thought to do any of these techniques on this, on a layout at all, um, let alone all together. So thank you, Essie. That was an amazing, um, an amazing layout to lift. I appreciate that. And I will check y'all later. Be sure to check out everyone else that is still playing along with May I Scrap Lift You. Seems like this month is never going to end. Oh my goodness. It was a really long month this month. Uh, but thank you so much. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Bye.